This video is actually going to be a little bit on the dry side because it's all about testing, film developing and time for E6 film. And the reason I need to do this is because I recently picked up the Fuji Hunt Chrome X processing kit for E6. Now this is the Full Monty 6 bath chemical process for E6. As your first developer, your reversal, your color developer, your conditioner, also called a pre-bleach, your bleach and your fixer and your rinse baths. But there's a problem with this kit. And the reason for that is these Fuji instructions. Now in here, there is a section for rotary tube processors, which is what the Jobo is. And there's a bunch of steps and times and development temperatures given. So the first step here is machine warm up, you know, running water, 10 minutes, six minutes, basically get the machine up to temperature. Then there's the pre-wet step. And now for the pre-wet step, I'm going to quote, not all equipment manufacturers recommend this step. If your processor instructions recommend a pre-wet, please check them for specific recommendations. Note that testing shows pre-wetting may show a slight sensiometric effect. The effect is greater with some emulsions. Therefore, a control strip may show different results from that on the emulsion in your process. This effect is slight and occurs randomly. That's real goddamn helpful, Fuji. So, from what I've been able to dig up on old Jobo manuals and all kinds of stuff, and how to process, the pre-wet seems to be completely thrown in the air. I have seen form threads about this, where the answers for, you know, should I pre-wet my film were, yes, no, maybe, I don't know, can you repeat the question? Which is really helpful, and also really typical of film development forms. If you ever look up that information, you're going to find people with, you know, just all kinds of crazy figures and numbers and times. So, the pre-wet, I'm not going to do it. Um, the kit doesn't recommend it here. It doesn't recommend it in any of the other steps. So, we actually have like a sink line processing table here, which shows, you know, no pre-wet step. There's one for small tank processing, which doesn't show a pre-wet step. So, I'm going to drop the pre-wet step. But then we get on to the first developer. And this is where things start to go off the rails. Because, first developer, temperature column, 38 degrees plus or minus 0.3 Celsius. Well, that makes sense. Time, six minutes to eight and a half minutes. Wait, what? Six minutes to eight and a half minutes. That seems like an awful big change. That's like 33% more time. And if you actually look at the, uh, the instructions for pushing and pulling slide film, you have to increase by two minutes the development time for one stop push. So this gets kind of in this gets kind of weird. And here's what it says in the small print under first developer. And I quote: The temperature you may use may range from 36.5 to 39.5 degrees Celsius. Once you select the temperature, control it within 0.03 Celsius. You will need to match your temperature with the appropriate time for an in-control process. The time you may use can range from 6 minutes to 8 minutes 30 seconds to produce an in-control process at this selected temperature. Control the time to within plus or minus 0.5 seconds for a consistent process. Basically, it's telling you to test this yourself. And when I looked this up online, I've seen all kinds of different times. Everything from 6 minutes to 7 minutes 15 to 8 minutes for first developer. It seems like everybody has a slightly different uh, first developer time. So I've already developed two rolls of film with this kit and in the Jobo and I developed for 6 minutes 30 seconds and that seemed to work pretty well. So that's my first development time I'm going to test is 6 minutes 30 and I'm also going to test 7 minutes 15 seconds. Now that's a 45 second difference of first developer time. According to the instructions for push pull that should equate to approximately a third to half a stop worth of brightness in the slide. So in the small print and color developer, we got another gotcha. It says here, increase the time to six minutes if maximum density is found to be too low. When I developed my other two films, I color developed for four minutes and it seemed to be okay, but I do want to test the six minute developing time to see what kind of results it's going to give me. The other reason I'm questioning this four minute color developer time is because in the sync inline processing section, it says six minutes. However, in the small tank processing, which is, you know, Patterson tanks, hand tanks, 
it has six minutes as well. So I don't think the simple act of rolling the film through the chemistry over and over again with continuous agitation is going to take off a third of our development time. And then for the rest of the steps, it's a pre-bleach, bleach, fixer, rinse and dry are all standard temperatures and times. In a normal big lab, what you would do in this situation, from what I've read online, is that you would use these control strips. And con these control strips appear to just be pre-exposed chunks of 35 millimeter film. You'd load them into the machine, develop under whatever test conditions you want. And then once it's developed and dried, you would put the film into some kind of density measuring device thingy-majig that would tell you how dense the film is and whether or not it was correct. And then you could adjust your times based on that, run another test strip and repeat the process until everything is nice and accurate. Two problems with that method. One, I don't have control strips. Two, control strips for 50 of them is something like 70 euros. So I'm not gonna spend that money. Three, I don't have a density meter thingy majigal for film. Four, I don't want to buy a density meter jiggle material for film. So with those reasons, I need to figure out a different way of testing this. So to do that, I'm going to use the Bronica, a roll of Provia 100F, and some color charts for testing. So the idea here is to shoot an entire roll of Provia under test conditions, all the frames exactly the same, which is gonna make for an absolutely thrilling roll of film. Then in the dark, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut that film into four different sections. I will process each section of that film differently in the Jobo processor. And then I will evaluate all four of them on the light table and we'll see what we get. I'm actually using the 645 back for the Bronica to give a few extra exposures because I'm, when I'm cutting this film in the dark, being accurate is actually going to be quite tricky. Uh, I want to be able to get as many frames into each test strip as possible so I can evaluate them fairly. Because if I end up with a bunch of like cut off frames, it's going to be a lot more difficult to evaluate. So for this, I'm going to go with 5.6 at one eighth of a second. Okay, one eighth. And that's the entire role. You know, this film probably had like aspirations coming off the production line. It's probably like, I'm gonna be used to shoot a, a glorious sunset or some wedding photographs. And I'm gonna create these amazing, meaningful memories for these people. And instead you're shooting test charts. So I can do that to other roles. Your sacrifice will be remembered. So here's my developing closet. Uh, please forgive the fact that it's absolutely filled with chemistry bottles and all kinds of nonsense. So the plan is to cut this roll into four equal sections. And it just so happens that this box width is about a quarter of the length of the roll. So I can do that to cut it into four sections. Then I'm gonna take three of those strips and load them into this tank here with no reels because when you put this lid on and seal it properly with the center column, the tank is light tight. So I can use that to store the test strips in between developments. As for the actual strip I'm going to develop, I'm gonna stick it on a reel, pop it into the big tank, and we'll develop it in this, hang it to dry, and then we'll repeat that process three more times. So one quarter roll is now loaded into this tank. Next up I have to get everything up to temperature and start developing. So I'm after doing a temperature check and chemicals are up to 38, the Jobo water bath's up to 38 and the wash water is up to 38 as well. So I've set my first dev to six minutes 30, my color developer to four minutes and we are ready to start developing. So cue the music. That is test strip number one done. I'm gonna rinse out this tank, 
load up the next test strip and do it all over again and again and again. So here's the results. We've got six minutes, 30 seconds at four minutes color developer and the same at six minutes color developer. And then we have seven minutes, 15 seconds at four minutes color developer and the same at six minutes color developer. And looking at the various things here, we can clearly see that there's basically no difference between all of them here. I evaluate these for about 20 minutes using a loop and I could not find any major difference between any of these, which to me is actually kind of insane because I increased the color developer time by 50%, you know, relative to each other, and it still didn't do anything. You'll also notice the massive light leak. That was caused by me. While I was shooting the roll, at the end of the roll, I forgot to flip down the mirror lockup button. And if you do that on the Bronica, you can actually like expose a frame 16 and frame 17. So I just blasted the film that was already in there with extra light and this caused some light leaks. But aside from that, how do we know which time to pick? And the answer is this one, six minutes 30 in the first developer and six minutes in the color developer. Now there's two reasons why I'm picking that. One is because these rotary tube processor instructions just don't seem to make sense in particular in the comment section where it mentions things like working solution with 200 mil of different concentrates and 50 mil of concentrate to make replenishers. And that is leading me to believe that the rotary tube processor section is actually meant to be used for like the bulk chemicals. So I'm not going to use the rotary processor section. I'm actually going to use for my Jobo the small tank processing section. And if you look at the small tank processing section, because I am actually using a small tank, it just happens to be on its side and rotating. But looking at the small tank section, you can see that the first developer is from six minutes to seven minutes. So 6.30 splits the difference exactly. And the color developer is six minutes. And the other reason is due to how E6 film works and how it creates density. So if you compare the 6.30 with the 7.15, you can actually see that the 715 is a hair brighter. But I would choose the 630 because it produces a slightly denser negative. And generally when you're shooting film, you want your negatives to be slightly denser if there's any doubt in your exposure. Obviously you want to do a perfect exposure and perfect development. But if there's ever any doubt, I tend to err on the side of making the film more dense because you can always scan for longer and blast more light through the film. But if the film is too thin, well then you're pretty much screwed. So that's why I'm going with the six minutes, 30 seconds and the six minutes color developer times. And that is pretty much it guys for this video. See you next time.